What do you think is going on here? Well, I think it's what's fascinating about that is that you could have almost said this, you know, 15 or 20 years ago. The fact that these two heavyweights are kind of back in the ring, uh, battling it out, I think is news in and of itself. But uh, you got two very different businesses going on. Microsoft, uh, almost entirely software-driven business, um, with you know Xbox and some other parts of it, and you got Apple that's done an absolutely brilliant job uh, managing hardware. So I wouldn't doubt you're going to see these guys kind of cross over back and forth for a while. Paul Meeks, uh, you look at Microsoft, it's up about 27% over the past 12 months. Apple barely up 1.5%. I wonder how much of this is just a moment in time where Apple's at maximum doubt, or how much of this is maybe the, the market shifting toward enterprise, giving uh, more valuation to cloud names. What do you think's going on? You know, I think that's a very good point. When I take a look at both of those names, obviously on a absolute and relative basis, Apple looks more attractive, but I continue to prefer, as most people do, uh, Microsoft, because Microsoft, as you said, is in the enterprise, Apple is not predominantly. And also, they've done a wonderful job through Azure and other properties to build their cloud business. And you know, we do have a services business at Apple, but it's essentially a pass-through for apps. And so I would like Microsoft's prospects much more. Paul Holland, I know we're talking a lot about Microsoft versus Apple right now, but just the very fact that that's the conversation in terms of which company here in the U.S. is, is valued the most, uh, uh, you know, has the biggest market cap, really sort of speaks to the fact that it's old tech that has become sort of the leader right now. Two companies that have been operating since the 1970s versus some of these newer tech companies that we've talked so much about. Well, if you think about the last time we got together, we spoke about the fangs and the fact that you know when you get a, an 80-knot tailwind going back into the past, uh, the big ships could sail faster than the small ships. Uh, they have bigger sails, they have bigger uh, you know scalability from that perspective, and I think you're seeing that now. I mean, you are in an economy that looks like it'll end this year, uh, according to you guys, uh, over three percent growth, and in that type of environment, large organizations uh, have a chance to really flex their muscle get their sales forces out there. And I think in the case of Microsoft, um, they've done a pretty good job, uh, as, as Paul just indicated, of, of moving to the cloud. And I think people perhaps underestimated their ability to be able to do that. I'd also point out that I think by now, people expected to see much more heavyweight competition coming out of Google Apps and some of the other uh, uh, competitors. And that really just hasn't materialized in the way that people might have thought. It's striking, uh, Paul Meeks, you know, both Nadella and Cook uh, came in uh, after our larger-than-life leaders, uh, in Adela's case especially, with pretty low expectations. And I wonder what you make of their tactical and strategic decisions over the long term, which has paid off the most, at least, at least so far. Well, I think uh, Satya Nadella has been absolutely brilliant. I am absolutely convinced that if Steve Ballmer was uh, still in charge, that you wouldn't have this uh, transformation of the company, at least not so aggressively to the cloud. So as far as you take a look at Satya Nadella at Microsoft and uh, Tim Cook at Apple, hey, they're both uh, very important figures in the uh, tech ecosphere. They've both done a relatively good job, but uh, I think Satya Nadella both tactically and his long-term view has been much more impressive. And Paul Meeks, I spent a little time on the ground in Las Vegas at Amazon's reInvent conference right now, uh, focusing on the cloud. A lot of people seem to still say Amazon not only is in the lead, but uh, is working with developers at a clip where they're not necessarily seeding momentum at all. What are the metrics that you're looking at uh, across the rest of the spectrum that's counting on cloud to power growth to see whether there's enough there for them to continue to grow if Amazon does stay dominant? Well, the one I look at mostly, at least for Amazon Web Services, is its peers in the infrastructure as a services space. And it seems to me, particularly with the fumbles and the forced change of leadership at Google, that uh, Amazon, followed by Microsoft, but Microsoft has been gaining market share, but there's still uh, less than half the market share of Amazon, that Amazon will continue to dominate that space. And of course, you also have platform as a service and uh, software as a service. And as you see from the results from the likes of Salesforce.com last night, which dominates the SaaS market, that they have opportunities as well. But in infrastructure as a service, I think it's going to continue to be Amazon's game 
with Microsoft gaining some share, uh, but still leagues behind what Amazon is doing.